At Bhopal, there was a machine purpose-built to deal with toxic gases, a device known as a vent gas scrubber. This is the vent gas scrubber we had at Bhopal. It works by neutralizing toxic gas before releasing it into the atmosphere. And on the night, though, it was switched off for maintenance. Even if this vital piece of equipment had been on, it was too small to cope with the quantity of MIC that was now out of control. This is really bubbling violently now. As you can see, lots of gas being generated. And of course at Bhopal, the whole thing was happening on a scale 100,000 times bigger. There's absolutely nothing that can be done to slow this down. Heat is being generated so fast that on an industrial scale we cannot remove it quickly enough to stop the reaction. This is the, uh, the worst nightmare for a chemical plant operator. This is a disaster. VN Singh was working at the plant that night, and it was his duty to check the area where the pipe washing had started some four hours earlier. By this time, midnight, water was flowing once again from the drainage nozzles, but he noticed that something was wrong. The disaster was just minutes away. When I got here, I saw water running out of the bleeders, but my eyes started to hurt. This was quite common at the factory, but that day it was very, very bad, so I ran to the control room. What VN Singh saw when he got to the control room about a minute later was the final stage of a chemical process that had been underway for over two hours. At a molecular level, things are happening extremely fast. As the system warms up, a second reaction kicks in. Trimerization, a reaction between three methyl isocyanate molecules that forms a stable molecule and generates more heat. As each bond is made, energy is released. Now the MIC molecules were able to react with themselves. All 42 tons of the material were free to generate heat almost simultaneously. The reaction is getting very violent at the moment. Material is starting to leave the top. Lots of gas being generated. Bubbles of liquid leaving. Right now, with the, the equipment they had at Bhopal, there was absolutely nothing that could be done to save the people. So I came running out to tank E610 and even though it was underground you could hear a terrible rumbling noise and the concrete started to shake and crack. The tank was now in serious danger of bursting, but it held. Instead, a pressure relief valve blew and the gas was on its deadly way. It traveled to the main plant structure, through the useless vent gas scrubber, and then out. The gas was carried away by a southeasterly wind, clear of the plant, but directly over the sleeping city of Bhopal. I started working for Carbide in 1971. It was one of the proudest moments of my life because I was selected to work for Union Carbide. But after that disaster, I'm ashamed now that I was ever associated with a company which did not manage to live up to its name and reputation in India. <laughs>